Hey everyone! Today on the Plastic Canvas we're painting Father Gascoigne from Bloodborne by Simon Games. Hey everyone, Matt here from The Plastic Canvas and welcome to the fifth episode in this Bloodborne painting series and today we are painting Father Gascoigne. He is one of the enemies that you'll face in this adventure and exploration game from Simon Games. Now in the box there are two versions of Father Gascoigne, so there's the one here that you can see I've already started painting and this is I guess like regular Father Gascoigne. And then there is also this one here that is the transformed Father Gascoigne. Now we haven't really played Bloodborne too much yet so we're not up to the point where this guy comes out so I don't really know what happens in order for him to transform. It just kind of looks like he hulks up I guess, he's a bigger more animalistic version, clothes are a bit torn all of that. Sort of stuff. But when I'd worked out that I was going to be painting Father Gascoigne next, I was looking at the two different sculpts and trying to work out which one I was going to do in the video because originally I was only going to be doing one of them. But then I thought, well, they do kind of go together because it is one character just in two different states. And when painting these, you want it to read that way. You don't want it to read as two separate characters. You, obviously, they look different, and so the way that they get painted is going to be different in ways. But you still want it to look as though both minis are the same character. And that doesn't just happen by magic. There are some choices that you need to make in the way that you paint both minis so that it reads as though they are the same character just in different states and so I thought well that's what the focus of this video can be. So in this video I'm going to be painting both of them and just talking along the way about the things that I did to hopefully make sure that when they're out on the table or at least if they get swapped however it is that that works it is clear that it is the same character they're both Father Gascoigne but just one of them is a transformed state from the other one. So the starting point was to try and work out what colours I was going to be painting Father Gascoigne because I found the same thing while painting Bloodborne that I did when I was painting Mansions of Madness. And that's that so many of the monsters and different enemy types that you come up against are just really, really dark colours like dark browns and dark greens and things like that. Now that's awesome, it looks great in the artwork and in the game I'm sure it looks really, really good as well. But when you shrink that down to the size of a mini, which is obviously very, very small, and then you put it out in the middle of the table, if you've got lots of dark colours, all of those details get obscured really, really easily and they end up looking kind of flat. And then also you just end up with a sea of brown or dark grey or whatever colour it is that's out there. And so whenever I'm painting minis, especially ones from games like this where there's lots of dark colours in the artwork, I'm always looking for ways that I can either swap out some colours of some key parts to help bring some details out, or just have a contrasting colour in there somewhere just to break up all of the browns or greys or whatever it is that the rest of the mini is. So if we have a look at the artwork here for Father Gascoigne, again, absolutely love the artwork. I think this looks awesome, but you can see it is very, very dark. He has that dark gray, almost black jacket on there. Um, you obviously can't tell much about his pants and things like that, but you can sort of get a bit of a sense about what color they would be. And as soon as I saw this, I thought, okay, Obviously we've got dark colours here, but I don't want to go that dark because I think once he goes into the middle of the table, it's just going to be too hard to read all of these different little details. So as you can see, I've gone for like a brown leather for his pants because I knew I'd be able to bring in enough contrast with the highlights there that you'd be able to see the details. But now here I've worked in some blue into his jacket or his cloak there. 
And that's mainly because I knew that once I started highlighting and more of the blue and a bit of gray started to go in there to lighten it off, that would at least take it away from strictly being black. So you'd be able to see the highlights and the different folds in the clothes. So those details would come out but it would still be dark, so it still sticks with that theme and it's not too far removed from the colouring that's in the artwork because working with a dark blue is not too drastically different from black. Uh, so the thing that I also did before base coating was that I hit it with just a black prime and I didn't go with a Zenithal prime like I normally do, just black. And that was so that once I started base coating and laying those colors down, the black prime would keep all of those colors nice and dark, but also add lots of depth to it as well. So you can see here at the moment, I'm just doing some of the final layers of the highlighting for the cloak, but the initial base coat was a black mixed with a dark blue. And that was just to keep it really, really dark for that initial foundation layer. And then I just started highlighting up from there. So I kept that first layer really, really dark so that any parts of it that I left exposed would be the shadows. So then once I started highlighting, I just started to mix in a mid-tone gray, initially just a little bit, and I covered most of the cloak because most of it really would be getting some amount of light. And then just as I was starting to work up, adding more and more gray, making that cloak color lighter and lighter, I just gradually reduced the amount of area that I was covering and just starting to concentrate it more on the upper part. So on top of the shoulders and the arms, just those parts that would be getting more and more light. So as I reduced the amount of surface area, just more gray got mixed in just to lighten it off until I was pretty much painting just the tops of his shoulders, the parts that would be getting hit by the most amount of light. And I didn't worry too much about getting super smooth blends because I wanted the cloak to look as though it had a textured finish to it. So normally I'd be feathering out the edge of each layer just to get a nice smooth blend back into the previous color, but I didn't do that so much here just to give it a little bit of a rough look. Now, earlier on, I talked about how if I'm painting a mini with lots of dark colors, I try and find a way to work in some sort of contrasting color just to make something stand out a little bit. And for Father Gascoigne, it was his scarfy thing going around his neck that I chose to do that with. So I just used a red for that because red, I figure, was a color that match still well enough. It wasn't too out there. It wasn't like a hot pink or something like that, but it was just different enough from the other colors around it that it does stand out. And now I am finally having my very first go at doing something that I've been meaning to do for a very, very long time, but I kept backing out of every time I had the chance to do it. And that is painting an axe or a sword in NMM or non-metallic metal. So using non-metallic paints to paint a surface to look as though it is made of metal. Now this isn't my absolute first go at doing NMM in general because I did paint the red armor on the red guard from Jaws of the Lion in NMM and in the lead up to painting that I did watch a few videos because I knew how difficult NMM was supposed to be and I found that to be really really helpful and so I did the same thing here. I watched a couple of videos on different people painting swords and axes just to get an idea of the basic approach and more or less for my first go just kind of did what other people have been doing. So I started with my lightest gray and I just blocked in those two spots where I wanted the reflections to be their brightest. And then I went to a black and a mix with a really, really dark gray to then block in the shadow parts of the reflections either side of that. And then from there, it essentially became a case of just gradually building up a blend or a nice smooth blend from that really, really dark gray black mix through to that light gray so that there was a nice transition from the shadow parts of the reflections through to the brightest parts. And as you can imagine, this is the part where I spent most of my time, the part that I found the most difficult by doing lots of back and forth. And I think the difficult part here is that because we are so familiar with looking at metallic objects, our eyes can just naturally tell if something looks right or not. And so yeah, it was really, really difficult to just get it correct because even though I was able to achieve smooth blends, there was still just something about it that just wasn't quite right. 
And I'm still not exactly sure what it was, but I think it's just because I'm used to looking at metallic objects and this wasn't exactly how the reflections would work. I was just able to tell that it wasn't quite correct. I think also because I was so close to it, holding it, you know, just a sort of a few inches in front of my face, I was able to see all the little imperfections. Once it's in the middle of the table though, really, really happy with how it looks, but it was a lot of back and forth. Um, but here you can just see a picture of the different colors that I use. So you can get a sense of the range of colors that I was using while painting the axe. So you can see the black and the darkest gray there were what I built the shadow part of the reflection with. The lightest gray there was the highlight part of the reflection, I suppose. And then you've got then the, the in-between gray there as well. And I just gradually had less of the black and more of the lighter grays mixed in just to gradually get that transition. And then I finished it off with just a little bit of white just to really boost the contrast. And I think that's the real key when doing NMM is getting that really really strong contrast because if you actually look at something that's made of metal it seems to either be in like full reflection or full non-reflection although everything's being reflected but it's either a super super bright reflection or it's really really dark and there's very little transition in between so that 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 I found was the difficult part to replicate but overall, especially considering that this is my very, very first go at it, super, super happy with how it looks, especially when he's out in the middle of the table. All right, so now we're getting into starting to paint the transformed version of Father Gascoigne, and the obvious main point here was to paint it as though it does actually look as though it is the transformed version of Father Gascoigne, and not an entirely new character. And so there weren't actually too many differences in how I painted this one compared to the other one, because all of the colors I wanted to keep the same so that it looked as though he was wearing the same clothes, but they were just ripped. But one of the early changes that I did make is just with the skin tone, I added more gray into it just to make it look a little less warm, I suppose, than the other version of Father Gascoigne, because I figure sort of going through some sort of a transformation process, like he's kind of hulking up, kind of, that it's going to just look a little less human, I suppose. So not too much of a shift, just enough, though, that it is a little bit different, and so it's not exactly the same as how it was with the other version. And, yeah, so I just worked a little bit more grey in there, and then you can see I did put that Reichland Flesh wash over the top, but I did thin it down a fair bit with the Lamian medium, just so that it didn't have too much of an effect. But the idea here was that it would pull around the bandages and in between the fingers and things like that, and just create some shadows. So that then I could come back to the base coat color that I used for the skin and just highlight up a little bit so that it brought the gray back into it. So it was obvious that there was a gray tinge to his skin. And then you can see here, I'm now shifting to misty gray, a lighter gray, just for some smaller, more subtle highlighting, just on top of his nose, on top of his lips, on top of his thumbs, just those more upper facing parts of his skin, just to really reinforce the gray tone in his skin without having to really go through and highlight all the different areas. And yeah, so really that was kind of the main thing that I did differently. So his pants and his cloak and that are the same color. And we can see his hair more in this one because he doesn't have his hat anymore. And so I worked a bit more there doing some highlighting and shading on his hair, whereas that was very, very minimal with the other one. But yeah, beyond that though, everything sort of painted fairly similar because like I've mentioned a couple of times, I want this to read as a transform version of the other mini, not a totally new one. So I didn't want to make too many changes so from here, I'm just going to leave you to watch the rest of how I paint the transformed version of Father Gascoigne, but I will just come and go when there are points to talk about where I make some slight differences between how I painted this one and the other one.
So here's one small part that I did need to paint on the transform version of Father Gascoigne that I didn't need to on the other one, because in the other one, the front part of his jackety kind of thing is closed up, whereas on this one, it's obviously been ripped open as he's transformed. So just to keep it nice and simple, but just make it a little bit different, I just grabbed a general leather color, just my polished leather, painted that small part under there, and then just went over it with a brown wash just to add a little bit of shading and bring in the detail. So very, very simple, but it is just one part that I needed to paint on this one that I didn't need to paint on the other one. So with the cloak, I'm painting this one in the exact same way that I painted the other one, just to really make sure that the colors look the same. So I use that same black-blue mixture as the base coat, so that any parts of that that I left unpainted when highlighting would just be the shadows. And now for the highlighting, I'm just mixing in some gray, and each layer I just add in more and more gray to lighten it off, and then just reduce the surface area, just getting closer and closer to only painting the upper parts of each fold and his shoulders and those sorts of parts just so that it makes it look like more light is hitting the top. But what I did make sure that I was doing here was I kept the other mini close by so that I could always be checking to make sure that the colours were looking correct so that the highlighted colours did look the same between the two sculpts. So now you can see I'm starting to work on the scarf here and there were two main changes that I made with how I painted this one compared to the other one. Now the first was just in terms of what color I base coated it with. That wasn't a deliberate choice to make them read differently or anything like that. I just felt that when I painted the scarf on the other one that I didn't start with a dark enough color and that the shadows weren't dark enough. So when I base coated, I base coated with bloodstain red which is my darkest red and that was just to make sure that, like I said, the shadows would be even darker. But also what I did is I painted that part of it extending over the right part of his chest. Now, I think in terms of the actual sculpt, that is just part of his cloak and not his actual scarf. But I wanted to paint that part as part of his scarf because it made it look a little bit more torn and just a little less neat, I guess for lack of a better word. So in the regular form of Father Gascoigne, his scarf is quite neatly tied around his neck, but now that he's gone through whatever the transformation process is, his scarf has torn and now dangling down over his chest. So that was just a couple of little changes that I made there, just so that, yeah, those, those shadows stood out a little bit more, and then also just so that it looks a little more rough and less tidy, I suppose. So now I'm into the highlighting process for his hair and beard, and this is obviously a part that I didn't need to paint on the other sculpt because his hat was covering up most of his hair. So I stuck with the same greys though, so base coated with that dark grey, then put a black wash over the top so that it would flow into all of the recesses, bring out those details a little bit more, and now I'm just highlighting up with some lighter greys just to make it look as though his hair is greying. But you can see I'm not covering the entire length of each 
strand with these lighter greys. I want it to look as though he's in the process of going grey. And if you look at someone that is gradually going grey, their entire hair doesn't go grey all at the same time. And so I've tried to recreate that look here. So when I did the first stage of the highlighting after the black wash, where I just went back to the base coat grey, that, you know, I, I painted the entire length of every strand with that. Then I went to my mid-tone grey, started kind of at the root of each strand, I suppose. And now I'm just finishing off with misty grey. And this is really just to bring out some contrast and just show that yeah, his hair is the same colour as the other one. Um, but now that we can see more, we can see that he is greying, but it's not totally grey. All right, so at this point, both Father Gascoigne's are finished, but I did just want to trial repainting his cloak in a different technique that I've used that works really, really well if you want something to look dark and gritty and kind of almost dirty. And that's using washes over a zenithal undercoat. And I thought that might actually work really, really well for his cloak because when I've used it for other minis, just the effect is really, really cool. And I I just thought it might suit well here. So I just painted black straight back over the cloak and then with grey I just blocked in where all of the mid-tone highlights will end up being and then now with white this will be where all of the brightest highlights are going to be. And then effectively I'm just going to take a black and blue mix of washes and then just put it straight over the top. And the idea here is that it will just more tint these undertones rather than completely cover them up. And so anywhere that it goes over the white, it's going to appear much, much lighter than anywhere it goes over the black, which should look like it's in shadow. Um, unfortunately, it just didn't really work. Um, you can see on the right, that's how it originally looked. On the left, definitely does not look as good. And so I didn't want to give up at that point because I know that this effect can look really, really cool. And so I gave it a second go. So you can see here I've covered it back up with this uh, zenithal undercoat. Here though, I more just dry brushed it rather than trying to build it up by blocking in the colors like I did before. And also I thought using the black in the wash mix earlier might have just made it too dark. So here I just used a straight blue, but again, it just didn't pan out. The original one on the right definitely looks better than the one on the left. But this effect can look really, really cool. Here are some other Bloodborne minis that I've used the exact same technique with nothing different. But I think the key difference here is that with these other ones, they have very textured surfaces like lots of fur on that sort of stuff. So there's lots of recesses for the washes to flow into, even with those zombies there, because they're quite small and so all of their muscles are quite defined. Again, the washes had nice recesses to flow into, whereas I think with this guy here, there's just too many flat surfaces and so it just didn't work. So there you go, I just repainted it in the exact same way that I did before and just left it there. All right, so now just with some nails to be painted and then a little bit of blood to make it look like he might have attacked someone viciously. Another way that I just sort of tried to differentiate this one a little bit from the other and make him look a bit more animalistic. Both Father Gascoigne's are now finished, so thank you very, very much for checking out another one of my videos. I really do hope you enjoyed it and that you got something out of it that you can take away and use in your own painting. If you did enjoy it, please do give it a thumbs up and if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with future videos as they keep coming out and do stop by the Facebook, Twitter and Instagram accounts for this channel where you can see what I'm painting so what videos are going to be coming up soon and if you do take anything out of my videos and use them in your own painting please do take some shots and put them on Instagram or Twitter and tag me in them so that I can see how my videos are helping you. A bunch of you have been doing that recently and I love seeing that so please keep doing that. But we're going to call that a day, so until next time, this is Matt from The Plastic Canvas signing out. Happy painting, everyone. Cheers. Aww.